and I'm excited because I just got this EB gear housing all programmed in Mastercam and we're about to run it on the HF 5500 at 1650 inches a minute. Let's go, baby. <laughs> chirping that's because of the pressure because I ran the tool fully engaged earlier without coolant to show you guys but now we're going deeper and because we previously ran the tool we only are cutting about this much on the bottom of the boot and therefore it doesn't have the pressure so it's hanging out you're only cutting this much of it and that's that chirping that ramp ramp that you hear but if you actually engage the full flute like we did earlier that's a ramp like that's the pressure right there. Right now it's engaged, it sounds good. I love the back that it tells. This Siemens control right here actually tells me right where we're at. We're 13 minutes into the program. We've got eight minutes left. That's 61% to 39%. Boom. program this thing I programmed it at 1500 and Barry's like dude you already went 1600 why are you going so far and I was like okay we'll go 1650 knowing that it'll hit 1650s on the long straightaways but when you're in tight proximity you're not gonna hit that speed but it's still hitting a thousand inches a minute 1200 inches a minute 1500 inches a minute 600 when it's down tight pocketing, it was getting up to 600 inches a minute in that small space, and that's fast. When we're helicoing in, it's a nice deep helical. We go twice as fast, but we're basically going 200 inches a minute. Is that 120%, that put it at like 240. And that's when it's like down inside, just helicoing down. And then once it gets to the bottom, then you murder. Watch, I'm gonna take the same tool, the four five. Everybody looks at it like it's a roughing tool and it's a monster roughing tool like you can see. But we're gonna bring back the same tool and we're gonna finish it. And that tool leaves beautiful finishes. The way that chip splitters are, they basically are in every flute. They're all staggered on each flute. So as it goes around, it still makes a beautiful finish. And just having that big core, the tool is so stabilized, super good. Do you want to make chips of greatness like this? Using tools like this or this? Then head on over to store.titansofcnc.com where you'll find the best prices on tooling and fixturing from any distributor while helping us give you free education. Oh man, so we were ripping some chips and now we're coming back and we're, we're just like, there's a time to rough and there's a time to finish. I say kiss the baby. So like we come in, boom, 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 get the material out, straight MRR aggression and then we come back, drop the spindle speed, come in at like 8,000, get rid of a little bit of vibration, you got a five flute tool, and we come back and just kiss the baby right into spec. I left about 30 thousandths on all walls, which is just like great for this tool. It's a three quarter inch end mill, and it'll give it a nice surface finish. It'll have a little bit of pressure on it, which will make it so it's not vibrating. It'll be great. A lot of people look at machining aluminum and they just jack the spindle speed all the way up. But it's important when you're roughing, especially at the speeds and feeds that we're roughing at, 
that you actually understand the torque and the power of the machine and the levels of the spindle, and then set the spindle to a place where it has a lot of power, you know what I mean? Where you can go super fast, but you can actually still take a bigger cut. When I was on the DMU, I was at 1,600 inches a minute. That was an amazing machine. But the problem is, to go 1,600 inches a minute, I had to get my spindle speed all the way up, which would eat my torque, and it just basically didn't have the torque and the power to actually make that cut, so I kept stalling the spindle. To make it work, I had to take like a 20,000th cut. On the Heller, it's a three-quarter inch end mill, and we took 75 thousandths, which is 10% full depth, but it handled it like nothing. The load was like nothing. And you guys could see it on the straightaways. Like you can go 1600 inches a minute, but, but is the machine capable of actually accelerating and it hitting that 1600 inches a minute? This machine actually is on the straightaways, but once it gets into a pocket, you'll see it at 600, 700, tight spots down to 300. It looks like it's fast because it's tight, but it actually doesn't reach the full capacity. But overall, when machining at that speed, you're getting the material off in a hurry. And when you have thousands of these gear housings, tens of thousands, like this is an EV gear housing, so like electric car builders like Tesla, they have parts like this that they're gonna run tens and tens and tens of thousands of these parts. So being able to run the whole thing at 1650, even if it slows down, I mean, that is productivity. And then you add the pallets to it where the machine never stops. And once all the material is all stacked up on the different tombstones or fixture that you have, you don't have to babysit the machine. You can literally walk away and it just runs nonstop. If you figure that out and figure out how to actually program off of a standardized tool list, how to upload your, your offsets with your program when you switch from program to program, how to program to the pallet, basically make the whole system fail proof, you can run production no matter where you are. If you're in Australia or the UK, you need to be running your own parts. In Brazil, if you're right here in America, we can make our own parts. People say, well, Titan, you can only make the big parts, not the small parts. But the point is, it's like, no, we can make everything if you have the right technology. That's why we brought in the Swiss. The Swiss machines over here, the Tornos, it's amazing technology and they kill it on the small parts. You just load up the bars, you walk away, it just drops part after part after part, completes the parts, all the tools are like nice and tight on it. And basically you can run tiny parts right here in America because you have the best technology and you can put people to work. That's what it's about right there. Hey, one thing that's pretty cool about this machine that other machines don't have is the light tower actually is an indicator for the percent that the program is complete. So once the lights reach the top of the light bar, you know your program's just about done. That's great for like a shop owner like myself too because if Barry's on the machine and running and I'm on the other side of the building, I can literally just look at his light and I can know exactly where he is on that program. And if I, need, if I need his assistance or I need something, I'll just be like, oh, I'm just gonna wait 20 minutes because I know he has a 40 minute cycle time and he's like halfway there. Just another thing, like there's so many little things about this that is awesome. Barry was actually on this machine first and he's like, Titan, you're gonna love this because like your Tesla, it's got a cleaning mode for the screen so you can actually just hit it, boom, and it freezes everything and you just clean, clean all of it because of course I don't like those fingerprints. And if you guys didn't see it, we actually put out a video with the CP6000 just murdering chips. But what we didn't talk about, what I really noticed when Barry was making that cut, and it was an aggressive cut, 90%, three times D axial, 90% radial in 1045 steel, monster cut, nonstop going. But the sound of the machine, there was no like, stuttering it was just a smooth silent aggression you know what i mean like just like it's just like you'll go all day with those cuts and it's crazy then you did that without cooling that's insane
Oh man, the HF 5500, 1650 inches per minute, just slaying and murdering material. So good, man. So I still have a few more things to do, so I'm gonna actually take the part, put it back into the machine. I got some threads going around here. I got an O-ring groove, and then we'll be ready for the next stop. Boom, thank you guys so much. I'm out.